we're really excited to be talking about a partnership that we have between Teach for America and Blue State Digital. And we are going to be talking about personalizing the Teach for America applicant journey. And my name is Sim, and I'm a product manager, a non-technical product manager at Teach for America. I've been there for about eight years. Um, right before I started that, I was down the road in Seattle at an agency called Blink Interactive. And I'm Andrea Powell. I'm a UX designer at a digital agency called Blue State Digital. We're based in New York, although we have offices around the country. And we focus on uh, fundraising, engagement, and website and platform builds for organizations that are mission driven. Um, so thank you all for being here during this uh, sleepy lunch uh, period of the day. We really appreciate it. OK, so I think the most appropriate way to start out the story is with the mission of Teach for America. So TFA uh, seeks to end educational inequity by recruiting recent college grads and professionals to become teachers for two years in low-income communities. And many of those teachers uh, stay on in the classroom after their two years are up. And many pursue other careers that are in adjacent sectors that still have impacts in the community uh, tackling the same problem of inequity. So whether you're a doctor, whether you're a lawyer, whether you go into tech leadership, you will have that experience in the classroom as kind of the baseline for everything that you do in your career in the future. And that is how Teach for America uh, describes its mission and how we operate. And just to give you a sense of scale, the program is very competitive. So this year we had 56,000 applicants and from that, we expect about 3,500 teachers uh, all across the US uh, this year. So as you can probably guess, we have a pretty complex application for somebody joining the core. It's both complex in terms of mindset. So what we're asking people to do is pretty hard. Um, it is also a complicated application in terms of the number of steps and the platform uh, setup is complicated as well. So I'm going to be talking about each of those difficult challenges. So first of all, in terms of mindset. So uh, without being offensive to anyone who has an e-commerce site uh, out there, um, what we're asking people to do are, is reorient their life to a life of impact. And that is our sales funnel. Um, and so the things that come with that are pretty challenging. So first of all, we're asking people to potentially move, into, move to a new place. We're asking them to do a big, long application and send us a lot of their personal info so we can do background checks. And so ultimately, they can interview in a school district and in a school and get placed in that school. So our performance indicators on our website are the number of people who register on the site and the number of people who submit applications, the people who show up at first day of school, and then ultimately the people who have long-lasting impact beyond their two years in the classroom. So those are kind of our key, uh, key performance indicators. So getting a little bit into more detail about the platform setup. So this is the old state. We, we were on Drupal 7, now we're on Drupal 8. And the participant would sign up for an account on Drupal. And through a bit of a service, that information that they sign up with gets sent over to the Teach for America application, which is a separate application built in Java. And then the participant would do things that you would normally expect in an application, like uploading transcripts, filling out short answer questions, doing some essays. And uh, if they are to be moved forward to the next steps, they do an in-person interview. Ultimately, uh, if they are accepted, they'll be hired by a school district and eventually attend day one in school. So it's a pretty long funnel, lots of area for friction, um, lots of places where people could potentially drop out of the funnel. So we had quite a challenge. And what part of this challenge is that because the application 
was a Java app, and because we were on Drupal 7, they were sort of separate systems that weren't talking to each other. So that was like a challenge. When someone was visiting the public site, it didn't have a personalized experience that was reflecting what we already knew about them because they already filled out their application and they already gave us some of their information and we know where, where they're progressing through the application, but the public site had no notion of that. So that's one of the things we were hoping to fix. Second thing is we wanted to really provide a better sense of progress. So if you can see here, the UI element at the top was a progress bar. That wasn't doing uh, it justice quite, quite uh, as we wanted it to. And as I was saying before, even if you are logged in on, in the old experience, there wasn't sort of a reflection that we knew who you were, that TFA like already has your information, and we know something about wh uh, what you're experiencing inside of the application. Uh, so that was something we were also hoping to fix. In addition, TFA operates in 51 different regions. And as you can imagine, teaching in an inner city school district in New York, for example, is much different than teaching on a reservation in New Mexico. So we wanted a space where these 51 independent regions could tell the story about their impact in ways that were meaningful to that region, but also were sort of connected, in a sense, to the larger brand story of Teach for America by giving it like a common thread. And this, this would uh, only serve to help those people who are applying to Teach for America. So at this point, um, that's sort of the problem space that we were operating in. And at this uh, moment in time, we kind of kicked it, kicked it over to Blue State Digital and said, here are our goals. Um, good luck with that. And <laughs> Uh, we partnered with them throughout the process to build the new experience, which uh, Andrea is going to be talking about a little bit. Yeah. So one of the challenges that we were dealing with in addition to the digital spaces that you just saw um, was the timeline. So we started this project and this redesign in the spring of last year, so a little bit over a year ago. And it had to be up and running and ready to go by the time the next application cycle started in the fall. Um, so it was a pretty ambitious ask. So one of the first things we had to do was to uh, really strictly prioritize what are our most important um, experience things that we need to fix um, in order to in order to update this system of platforms in a way that would help those applicants have um, a more seamless and more useful experience. So uh, we kind of brought it down to about three main goals. The first was you know just stating the obvious. We wanted to make it feel like all of these different websites and platforms felt like that they were part of the same entity or that at the very least that they were representing the same organization. So um, fleshing out the visual system, um, updating it, um, and making sure that it was being applied consistently across all these different sites. Another bit of feedback that the Teach for America team had been gathering for some time was the, the idea that a lot of people who come in to join the core are not always completely aware of all of the um, nuances and challenges of going through the application and training process. Um, just because there's so much detail about what they're going to have to do, um, we wanted to take the information that was already being provided, fill in any gaps, and just make it as clear as possible um, what they're going to need to be doing at each stage of the user journey. And then finally, we really narrowed our focus, again, as we, we've been saying, to applicants um, as our primary audience group because they are um, the ones that are going to be joining the core. Um, this is the, the best way to improve the experience for all core members is to start with their first interactions with Teach for America. And also, this is where the digital platforms are going to have the most impact on that experience versus once they get into the classroom where it's really about the in-person interactions. 
So I'm going to talk about the design stream and then kick it back over to Sim to talk about the technical solutions that we, or technical approach that we took. So um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the first thing was to update the visual system to take TFA's branding, um, make it feel a little bit more, more modern and make sure that it was expandable enough to be able to grow with Teach for America over time since they are attempting to tackle the very large problem of educational inequity around the country. Um, their, their work is always growing, so we wanted to make sure this, this uh, visual system could grow with them. And um, we wanted to see if there were opportunities to simplify the actual number of steps that users have to go through in the application before we started trying to, to go to design solutions. Um, we were able to do that a little bit, um, but I'm not going to talk about that very much because it, it was very much... Um, very much limited by the types of educational requirements that are existent across the 50 states. Um, so there's only so much we could do with the actual steps of the application. Um, next, we wanted to find more ways to provide um, personalized, targeted action prompts that reflected what we knew about that user and where they were in the application process. Um, and then also just to, again, kind of reinforce the information about what the process was going to be like by um, providing a more nuanced set of, of reminders of where they were in the process, what was still coming up, and to help, help them get ready um, earlier on as they started their application. So here's the grand reveal. <laughs> These are the two, um, two primary parts of the experience, the main public site and the application center. So as you'll see, um, we, so in updating the visual system, um, we were able to kind of give a lot of cues across these two different platforms that you were, again, um, in a space represented by the same organization. We were able to make the navigation consistent so that um, it was more seamless as you were going from one site to the next, and it felt more like you're part of the same experience. Um, clearly, our, our typographic system and our color system is consistent across both. Um, but one thing that we came to as we were starting to work on all these platforms um, was that we still wanted the logged in space, the application center in this instance, uh, to feel like something special. So we did look to find ways to build out clear um, visual d differences between the two, again, without, without breaking that idea of, of the connection in the same entity. So the public site was really focused on photography, on a bold typographic statements, whereas the application center, um, it was supposed to feel like more of a, a detailed kind of private space where you're working, you're getting your work done and you are progressing through a more detailed set of, of pages. So it's more focused on um, graphic elements and typography and not really bringing in um, much photography. Also, we came to the realization through working on these 51 regional microsites that it actually, from kind of a higher level architectural standpoint, would make more sense if they were, rather than separate individual microsites, if they felt more like uh, detail pages and sections within the main site itself. So this would allow us to, again, um, ensure consistency across all of them. You'll see they have the same navigation as the rest of the site. It may look a little bit different because this is the, the scroll down state, but um, they all have the same navigation. It matches the rest of the site. They are located in a section of the main public site rather than scattered on their own microsites. Um, and we were able to systematize the, the content and the subsections a little bit more. So you see the same four subsections under each state. Um, in each region name, and this way we were making sure that each of the regions were providing um, a similar, uh, a, you know, comparing similar types of information across all these different sections. So then we ended up needing to rely a lot more on the photography on, on these landing pages to really do that work of, of demonstrating kind of the individual character um, of each of the different regions where Teach for America works. So we really leaned into that beautiful um, photography to do that work for us on these, on these new sections. So just a moment on the navigation. One thing I wanted to pull out in more detail was that we also um, were doing a lot of the work of kind of organizing the information that we were providing on the public site um, using the two different levels that you see here in the navigation. 
So in the main line on the bottom, close to the, close to the logo, we trimmed down the main sections of the site to just um, the three main stages of the Teach for America core experience, which is how to join, that's the application, life in the core, those, that's the training that goes into your first year teaching and then your two years in the classroom, and then life as an alum, what does it like to be part of this community um, of educators? Um, for everything else, so we had some other secondary audiences outside of applicants. Um, we had people who might choose to be a local partner in one of these regions where Teach for America works. Um, you have people who want to um, find ways to get involved, um, and also just members of the general public who want to understand what the mission is. So we kept this information still in the navigation, still easy to find, but we really wanted to make sure that it wasn't distracting from the information that an applicant would need, and we really wanted to give them uh, space in the navigation to be able to find the information that was relevant to them. Um, and we were okay with having everyone else have to dig a little bit more because it was most important to get applicants their information. Um, and speaking of personalization, as Sim was mentioning earlier, um, we also um, really leaned into this idea of a, a CTA button that would change um, its language depending on where you were in the process. So if you are just a new visitor, it's trying to encourage you to apply to join to the core. Um, if you're in the middle of the application, it could shift to reflect um, some of the key deadlines that are coming up. And um, it would stay ever present um, even as you're scrolling down the page and the navigation gets a little bit, a little bit smaller as you can see up at the top. So this is what the full homepage looks like. Um, as you can see from top to bottom, again, we're really leaning into the storytelling aspect of um, positioning what problems Teach for America is attempting to solve and um, how they go about their work. Um, we tried to pull in other personalization moments and calls to action in the denser parts of the text. So let's say we have a detail page on you know, who is eligible to teach and how do you know if you are going to be eligible and should apply. Um, we also had these contextual modules um, with the text reflecting you know, what, is the mo what is the most um, uh, pending application deadline and it could be personalized if you are logged in um, and are already on your way to applying to join the core. So, um, so yeah, we have those kind of bold, personalized um, components like the, the CTA button and then also ones that are deep into the text. Over on the application center, this is just a zoom in on the dashboard, what we are calling the, the applicant center dashboard. Um, so the idea with this is to make sure that um, we are able to kind of draw their eye and um, point them to what stage of the application process they're in, their four main stages. Um, and then within that, you can see all the different steps. So we expanded that really great timeline that was in the original version and just really leaned into it so that you know, rather than just showing the top level, let's say um, six most important moments of the application process, we said, let's just show them everything. We're still gonna provide those high level um, buckets, but we're gonna show you and give you a chance to just know what to, what to expect. And also, if you can see in the, the small um, iconography next to it, we have pie charts and check marks for you to be able to see what, what you've completed um, or what you still need to complete before you can submit that section of the application. Similar to the main part of the site, um, we also just made sure to have these indicators on the detail pages themselves as well in the form, in this case, of um, sub-navigation and sidebar navigation, um, again, to show you, okay, within, again, within your bucket of steps, um, what do you still have left to complete? So we're trying to make sure that the kind of the landing pages and the navigation and the detail pages are all working concurrently um, to provide you up-to-date information about where you are in the application process. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the technical approach here. And so first of all, I would just say that in terms of the button states that Andrea was talking about, that was a very simple API call from Drupal to the applicant center getting uh, sort of where the user is in the application and presenting that back to Drupal so we could uh, customize the button for the particular state that the user is in. Uh, in terms of 
technical or in terms of a mindset that just required really course, uh, close collaboration between the developers working on the public website and the developers working on the application, obviously. So that's not so much a technical approach as more of a mindset. Uh, as part of this project, we also went from hosting the site internally at TFA and we moved over to Pantheon. We also, in the process, shifted from D7 to D8. So there was quite a bit of learning that happened from a developer perspective. And actually, one of our developers is in the audience, so uh, she can probably speak to that. Um, we also developed a shared atomic design vocabulary so that we could approach this in a way that the design worked both for the application and for D8. And so I'll talk about that approach that we used. And we used Pattern Lab to do that specifically in, in Twig. So a little bit of why we shifted from D7 to D8. And um, as we learned from the keynote this morning, we still have more than two years of support left on D7, but as a little bit of future proofing, we thought it was a good time. There's a lot more available uh, out of the box with D8 as well. We have a definite focus on accessibility, and that is front and center in D8 with quite a few ARIA attributes for adaptive devices. And just a lot more available in core. So if you are not familiar with atomic design, the principle is really simple. It's basically just building up to really complex things from really simple things. So you start with uh, things that are atoms, you build up to molecules, you then go into organisms and templates. And roughly speaking, a little bit of hand waving here, but if you're thinking about this in the drupal -y way, templates are sort of like page templates, organisms are like your paragraph components, and mul multiple molecules uh, make up organisms and multiple atoms make up molecules. So to get a little bit less abstract there, we can talk about, uh, and you can actually follow along if you want, uh, our pattern lab is public, and you can see all of the patterns that we use there. I'll, I'll just leave that up for a second if you are trying to get there. But uh, right here on the screen, those are Teach for America's brand colors. The nice thing about pattern lab is very deeply integrated into Drupal, so let's say you wanted to change the color of a button, you change it in Pattern Lab, and it changes everywhere across the site. So that's really nice. Um, sorry, I'll leave that up for one more second if people are still trying to get there. So the atoms are the most basic building blocks of the design system. You have things like a button, or a color, or a text block, things that are simple and can be described pretty easily. Next up, you have molecules, which are basically combinations of atoms. So in this case, there's a CTA, there's some copy, and there's a link. So there's a notion of that you're combining atoms to make an element here. One step up from that is an organism. So this organism is that modal box that we just looked at before, and a map overlay of Teach for America's different regions. And finally, we have our templates. So in this example, there is a header, there's a footer, there's top navigation, there's CTA at the top, there's side navigation, there's a text block, and there is the, the region map that we showed before. And there are other sessions about Using Pattern Lab, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about this, but the nice thing is that you can see the visual representation. And for a developer, this is super nice because then you can see the code behind each of the elements. All right, so now moving along to our sort of takeaways or what we learned about moving from D7 to D8 and doing this whole project with Blue State. So I think the first thing that we are, are proud of is that we had 56,000 people, uh, people apply to the core this year, 
which is the second highest applicant pool in Teach for America's history, uh, was, which is amazing. And especially um, because of the headwaters we're facing, we have a good economy. That is a really good number of people who, who applied. And we were able to have a higher conversion rate for site registrants and a much a vastly improved experience for not only our site visitors, but all of the authors in the 51 regions who need to tell the story about impact in their particular region. So uh, this was our first project using Pattern Lab as an, a an agency, um, and it was really awesome. Uh, we really enjoyed using it. It was great to help ensure brand consistency across these um, different platforms and sites um, because of how integrated Pattern Lab is with Drupal. You make a change, as Sim was saying, you make a, a you say you change a, a button color, it, proper, it, it just kind of um, changes all of the other um, locations where that button is. Um, it's easier for front end developers to kind of prototype and iterate and be experimental without having to rely on something being pre built by the back end developers or having to um, spend a lot of time with, with the visual designers. They could um, experiment a bit more on their own and be a bit more autonomous in that way. Um, and it just makes it easier to maintain a single source of truth than, say, um, a design UI library um, separate from, you know, separate from the, the front end code. So um, overall, easier to have that central source. Okay, and a few of our learnings from moving t from D7 to D8. I'm sure there are more than on this list. But uh, number one, not all modules were available in D8. So those required us to maybe write some custom code, do some workarounds. A lot of the documentation is relatively light, uh, especially for our setup. We were not running decoupled and I think that's getting more mature as time progresses. So that seems like it'll be less of a problem in the near future. And I think um, speaking for our developers, there was a steep learning curve uh, in terms of getting comfortable with our new stack. So not only going from D7 to D8s, but also learning Twig, Pattern Lab all at the same time uh, felt like kind of a big, big shift all at once. So. Um, Definitely mm -hmm. not for the faint of heart. But it is very possible. And we think that if you have the opportunity to do that, this kind of work, you should definitely do it. There's a little bit of a learning curve as there is with any um, kind of new space or new platform um, in particular in terms of aligning on terminology for um, across designers and developers and product managers um, because we all had to kind of learn to define some of the middle categories like um, like uh, molecules and organisms in the same way, which is a little bit harder than say the templates or the atoms. Um, so you just need a you know, plan to have a little bit of ramp up time to align on that um, if you're trying to get your team started on Pattern Lab. And one of our, um, I guess, most salient points is we think that investing the time now will result in time saved later. So we invested a lot in professional development, um, in new technology, but this is going to really help Teach for America long term, and it's definitely worth it. And don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. And I think that's sort of what we will leave you with. So um, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I realize we used up all our time, but we are going to go camp out outside of the room um, right after the session. If you have any questions, um, come up and, and give us a shout. Um, also, feel free to reach out using email. Um, thank you so much, and have a great rest of your DrupalCon. And you can definitely come up and ask questions if you have any as well.